Hello, and welcome to Shedding the Bitch Radio, where you can discuss, debate, and get advice on how to discover and shed the bitches of fear, insecurity, self-doubt, and negative mindsets, so you can realize your dreams and life purpose, and create and accelerate the riches you want in life. Join us here live every Tuesday at noon Eastern, and dialogue with us at 818-572-2910. You can also chat with us at Blog Talk Radio slash Shedding the Bitch. Or share your stories on our website at SheddingTheBitch.com. Whatever the bitch is that's holding you back from living your life to the fullest, it's not worth giving up the riches in life that you deserve. So call in now and let Bernadette Bowes know what's holding you back. 818-572-2910. Good day, good day, good day, everyone, and welcome to Shedding the Bitch Radio. I am so excited about this conversation today. Emotional intelligence. Just wrap your, give it a big hug. Give yourself a big hug because that's what we're going to be doing as we get into this whole subject of emotional intelligence and really the power of connection, which is key, especially I will have to say, I think it's gotten elevated over the last 12 or 15 months with what everybody's been going through. So um, hold on tight for a powerful, powerful conversation in regards to that with our guests. But before we do that, I just want to, as always, thank our new listeners and viewers. I am so humbled and honored that you are finding us, whether that is out on our Shed the Bitch TV channel on YouTube. It could be on our Shedding the Bitch Facebook channel where we do stream this uh, each and every Tuesday. It might be on Block Talk Radio, uh, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher. Spotify, any number of the uh, streaming services. I'm just so grateful. Everyone here actually in the uh, Shedding the Bitch community is just so grateful that you are finding us and that you are liking, subscribing, rating us. You're uh, providing feedback in regards to topics and even uh, recommendations for guests that you'd love to hear from. And so I, you know, all every one of us just ask that you can continue to do so because it just ensures that we are bringing you uh, the top of mind subjects that really will help you create riches in your work and life that you deserve. All right. And of course, our ongoing uh, followers and tribe that uh, has been following us both from our Shed the Bitch TV YouTube channel or on any one of the uh, podcast streaming services, downloading it, taking us with you and um, also ensuring that we are being rated and starred and subscribed and followed and liked. Um, And again, you know, providing comments and suggestions. Uh, Without you, we wouldn't find all of those uh, new ears and eyes. And we're so grateful for it. Uh, And continue because we have a lot more to talk about, even after the number of years we've been um, on air. So uh, we are very, very, very grateful to you. Um, I also need to thank North Georgia Tax Solutions, our ongoing sponsor of our the Shed in the Bitch uh, program, and Debbie Snelling and her team uh, are a powerhouse, powerhouse financial and tax services company that services all of the United States, not just North Georgia. So please, please check her out and her team at ngtaxsolutions.com. Tell her I said hi. And, um, you, you know, you'll be in great hands, whether it's for your small or corporate size company, or if it's for you personally, just check out North Georgia Tax Solutions for all your financial and small, uh, or I should say, uh, tax services needs. All right. Uh, so today we are talking about emotion, emotional intelligence and the power of connection. As humans, we are hardwired for connection. Those who are able to connect well with others do better in the workplace as well as in all areas of life outside of work. We used to think that our IQ or cognitive intelligence that determined how successful we will be in life was the most important. But over the last 25 years, we have discovered that our emotional intelligence or EQ is also an important factor. Our emotional intelligence has a great impact on our decision-making process. It determines the extent to which we are able to make strong, healthy connections with others. And this, in turn, determines whether people want to hire us, promote us, do business with us, like, know, trust, and do with us, and build relationships and be in relationships with us 
or be our friend. Simple things we can, I'm sorry, what you want to listen for and what you're going to learn are simple things uh, that you can do to really spend time with yourself to understand your emotional intelligence and that has a strong impact on your decision making. And what you need to do in order to develop your emotional intelligence. Uh, so I want to ground you in a rich question, and then I'm going to introduce our guest and bring him onto the onto the program. But your rich question for Harvey and all of you is a question that's going to ensure that whether you showed up and you're like, well, you know, this sounds interesting, although it doesn't really relate to me. I I can guarantee you that if you really consider the, the rich question, you will find that as we get into the conversation, there'll be something that you can relate to and hold on to and learn from. So your rich question for today when it comes to our conversation around emotional intelligence is really simply, on a scale of one to 10, how in touch are you with your own emotional intelligence? Zero for, I have no idea what you're talking about, Bernadette. <laughs> Or 10 being that, yes, I am well connected, I'm well in tune, and um, my emotional intelligence is off the chart. All right? So let me introduce our guest and bring him in. Our guest is Harvey, and I, and I, I, <laughs> I knew, but it's Harvey Deutschender, and he is an emotional intelligence expert speaker, trainer, and internationally published author of The Other Kind of Smart, Simple Ways to Boost Your Emotional Intelligence for Greater Personal Effectiveness and Success. And I'm going to mention it, but check them out on Amazon, the book on Amazon, but also make a note right now. Go to theotherkindofsmart.com uh, for the book and to learn more about Harvey. He also writes for Fast Company and has monthly column with HR Professionals Magazine. As well, he is a regular contributor to Real Leaders Magazine, the official publication of the Young Presidents Club. Harvey is a TEDx speaker with TEDx Beacon Street, Boston. In 2015, Harvey was recognized by Trust Across America as one of the top thought leaders in trust. Harvey has overcome major obstacles in his life to get where he is now. Not only has he studied emotional intelligence extensively, he has experienced much of what he talks about. He walks his talk. How are you, Harvey? I'm great, Bernadette. Uh, thanks for having me on. I'm excited. Oh, <laughs> you are so, so welcome. I am so looking forward to this conversation because I, I resonate, but I agree with you so wholeheartedly about the fact that we have to get in touch and we have to find other ways of making connections, valuable connections, purposeful connections. Yes. So all of that is fabulous. But before we get into all of it, share with us, if you would, uh, it, it appears you might be in Boston, but share with us a little bit about who Harvey is and what brought you, uh, you know, in the direction of really studying emotional intelligence, let alone trust. I love that. <laughs> Thank you, Brent. Yes, uh, well, I could talk about this for hours, actually, but, <laughs> you know, I, I know we're, we don't have much time. Actually, I'm uh, not from Boston. I, 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 uh, it was the, uh, the TEDx talk was actually done virtually, and I'm from Edmonton, Alberta, in Canada. Oh! That's, uh, and, and, yeah, in Western, uh, Western Canada. So, <laughs> oh, sweet! Yeah. <clears throat> so, what got me into emotional intelligence? Had, had a, uh, a very difficult upbringing. My parents were refugees, came over from Europe after uh, the Second World War, had lost everything, totally everything. I uh, had to borrow money from passage from the church. Uh, when we came here, the first 12 years of my life were, you know, really in, in, in dire, dire poverty. Uh, my mm -hmm. mother told that uh, would, would, would feel guilt when my when got older, my brother and I, uh, that, uh, you know, she blamed it on uh, malnutrition because someday she only had an orange to feed both of us. I don't remember that. I, I was too young, I guess, but I don't remember ever being hungry or anything. But, but uh, yeah, so so uh, the, the rest of the family, basically, we settled in Europe. So we didn't have any uh, support systems or anything. It was just uh, our family and a few distant relatives. And uh, <clears throat> my father was very, very angry. Um, and it, it, it got worse and worse as I, you know, um, as we got older. And 
is basically lived in a in, in a very a very poor area. I I was always curious about the big world out there. I wanted to know more about the world. I wanted to experience the world, and uh, my whole idea of getting out of there and and and, and making a a life uh, outside of there was was getting an education. I was lucky. I did well in school, and uh, so you know I managed to uh, first one the family to uh, my parents were also very poorly educated. My mother was an educated one. She had I think uh, you know a grade three. Uh, yeah. So uh, <clears throat> I went to university and uh, I made it through, but I felt like a total outsider because you know I didn't run into a lot of people. Um, that were like me, came from mm. sort of my background, you know. Uh, right. Yeah, <clears throat> most of them were sort of upper middle class or upper, you know, people. And, um, you know, I, they talked about the holidays and stuff that their family went on, different experiences. I couldn't relate. I just wanted those conversations to end. And it was like an outsider that I lo- looking in always. And um, I had a lot of problems because of the upbringing, very negative, a, a lot of conflict in the family. Um, and, uh, even though I got a degree and I should have been, you know, happy, um, uh, you know, I'd gone far beyond what anybody th- thought I would be able to, I wasn't happy. I didn't have the, 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 the work I wanted to, I didn't have the friends I wanted to. And then I realized, like I tried to, you know, diagnose myself, read self-help books and nothing seemed to speak to me. Then one day <clears throat> I heard about a new book that came out by Daniel Goldman called Emotional Intelligence why it can matter more than, than, than IQ. And I thought, this sounds interesting. Picked it up and I started reading and, and, and this line jumped out at me in page four. It said, you know, your intelligence can come to naught when your emotions hold sway. And it was like, aha, that's it. This is the answer. This is right. I, now I know what I need to do. So uh, I learned everything. Harvey, I could. Harvey, could you repeat yeah. that line though? Could you repeat that oh. line just to kind of punch it in? Yeah, the 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 uh, the line said, "All of your uh, intelligence can come to naught when your emotions hold sway." So in other words, you know, it doesn't matter how smart you are if your emotions are controlling you; they're running your life, yeah. and it doesn't matter. So yeah. Uh, yeah, suddenly, aha! Because I I thought I was smart. I you know kind of knew I was smart. My my principal in school actually, in high school said, Harvey, you've got a good head on your shoulders. Just don't let it go to your head. But that wasn't enough. I, I was smart, but I wasn't the other kind of smart. I wasn't smart with my emotions. I couldn't use my emotions to you know, to, to, to get ahead in the workplace. I couldn't use my emotions to make the friends that I wanted to the connections. I was, I was sort of uh, <clears throat> tuned into the negative and, and I didn't realize how I was coming across to other people. Then I started, I joined this men's group where, where, you know, this men's group performing where men started to actually get together and talk about their feelings and things like that. And I started to learn about myself and I started to learn about others. And I started to change. I made all these changes in my life. And then I said, well, you know, this is powerful stuff, emotional intelligence. People have to know about this. But I thought, well, you know, the problem is everything that's written out there, you know, like, like Daniel Goleman's book, it's, it's got the concepts and everything, but it's academic. Yeah. And I, I got to put this in a way that people can really understand. And I thought, somebody's got to do this. And I said, well, I'm, I'm a somebody. And I'd actually written a book and got it published before that. And I said, I, I can do this. So it wasn't easy, but I managed to find an uh, actually American publisher. And I, I and then I started, uh, my life started to change and uh, it got better and better and better. And uh, so, you know, I, I got, I, you know, got on this uh, journey that, uh, you know, of teaching people, uh, you know, sharing this with, with other people, right. teaching about emotional intelligence. And I'm still on this journey. It's given me a whole new outlook on life and a purpose. And I just, uh, you know, I, I, it, it's just such, it's just so powerful. And uh, yeah. You know, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Well, let, okay. So, all right. That's, uh, that is a fabulous, fabulous story. Um, so help us understand for those out there going, well, whatever, whatever. <laughs> exactly. Cause I did, I yep. did about eight years ago. I was like, whatever. Um, help us understand what emotional intelligence is. Well, it's it's the way we uh, it, it's our ability to to differentiate, recognize, and manage our emotions and the emotions of others in our environment. 
And uh, I'm not sure we can manage others as much as we can manage our own, but I know we can influence. We can influence to a great deal other people if we can manage our emotions and, 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 and sort of influence them through using emotions. It's wow. the way we show up in the world. It's, it's how we show up. It's how people see us. And, and, yeah. and being aware of that, being aware of that, how we show up, that what we put out to other people may not be the way it lands on them. And, yeah. and be, being aware of that and, and, you know, knowing that and being able to change those things and, and make us uh, better, better people, better able to connect with others. And, right. Uh, yeah. Right. Now, would you say, would you say this has to do with um, the fact that emotions feed your yeah, or even beliefs feed your emotions, which feed your, you know, feelings, which feed your thoughts, which then feeds, you know, your the actions you make and, and that kind of thing. Is it kind of on that, le- you know, that basis of how it does get projected and how we do respond? Yeah. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> the, the, the important thing, the, the, the first thing that when we want to ch- uh, develop our emotional intelligence is to become more self-aware. We become sort of more self-aware of, of what we're carrying, you know, around with us. Right. And uh, a lot of what we're carrying goes all the way back to childhood. What what mm-hmm. we learned, what was what was uh, put into our subconscious mm-hmm. that we may not even be aware of. Yeah. Okay. That, that we are carrying around, and we re- we react from that, and that's that drives our lives. Right. And be- becoming aware of that, and and you know using it if it's 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 helping us get what we want in life and if it isn't changing that being able to become aware of that and starting to change that for me example it was where i was carrying a lot of a lot of negativity i grew up with the idea that you know uh people people will will take advantage of you they'll they'll, you know be out to get you things like that those kind of ideas and as long as i was carrying those kind of ideas I, i wasn't very open to to, to making connections, to developing better relationship. Once right. I became aware of that, I could change that. You know, I, I could start, I could start uh, thinking and, 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 and doing things differently because I was now aware and I was able to change. I was able to make changes and, and, and put new ideas in um, over time. Yeah. That became, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, just to throw a, an example in as well is, um, I always wondered why I felt so like disconnected. I never felt like part of a group or that I belonged or that, you know, that I kind of fit in, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And it, I, I was probably about 48, 48. And I started kind of doing what you're saying to do is really mm-hmm. evaluating kind of what happened in the past. And um, Harvey, I'm one of 12 children. I'm a middle child. And wow. yet, I, yet I'm very, very different. And, and, you know, I kind of stand out from the rest of them, or I did at the time. So when I was a baby up until about 10, I was always teased that I was the milkman's daughter, the postman's daughter. I even went to my mother crying, thinking, you know, am I adopted? Am I, you know, am I not really a family member? Mm-hmm. And it was, it was all of that that happened when I was like one or two or three years old, all that teasing and those comments that really kind of, in, you know, embedded in my psyche that I didn't fit in, that I didn't belong, mm-hmm. you know? And, yes. and when I, but to your point, which I love is the minute I became aware of it, I was able to make a decision to let it go and, and do, you know, and kind of not allow it to impact me. So that's mm-hmm. what we're talking about, right? Right. That's what we're talking about. Yes, exactly. Fascinating. Fascinating. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is fascinating because there's ideas implanted in our mind when we're when we're children and uh, because you know everything goes into our subconscious and and you know now as adults you know w- w- you know when we're told something an idea comes in we can say no no i i don't accept that or you know that doesn't make sense to me that's that's not right whatever as children we couldn't everything mm-hmm. went in there everything went in there we had no we had no ability to block anything that was going in yeah. you know and the positive went in and the negative went in, and mm. ideas that limit us about who we are, what we're capable of doing in this world, in this life, those ideas are all in our subconscious. Once we become aware of that, we, we can change that. Right. But we right. have to become aware that they're there, to know okay. that. Okay, so what, and you had mentioned earlier that 
There's, you know, there's some things that we aren't even aware of. Mm -hmm. Um, So what happens, what, what triggers someone or, or how do they get triggered to, to kind of say, Hey, look, you need to take a look at, you know, kind of all your belief systems and all the things that you, you know, that you've experienced because something has, has caused this frustration or struggle or, or obstacle that you're dealing with today. How do they, how, you know, how do they uncover that? Like, how do they become conscious? Well, you know, it's, sometimes it can be something, a trauma, a trauma that happens to us, mm-hmm. something, a loss Sadly. or something, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're, th- we're thrown off guilt, we're thrown off balance, and we start questioning everything that we've been, you know, told, or, you know, and, and, and grown up to believe. For example, um, for me, it just happened one day, um, you know, like going to university, I, I was actually, I had never thought, because I wasn't, you know, I didn't grow up in an environment where people went to university. You know what? What they did was, you know, if, if you wanted to to move up, you, you know, learn learn the trade or whatever. You you never somebody from my background so didn't go to university. And this, there wasn't even the the idea wasn't even there because it didn't wow. you know, wasn't around people that that you know, did that or knew anybody. Wow. And one day I was actually I was driving I was driving a, a motor coach. I worked for Greyhound and I was in a restaurant. I had gone to college and I'd done well. And then one day I was in a restaurant. The idea just came into my mind. I'd like to get a degree. I'd like to go to university. And and I I thought, why can't I? You know, why can't I question that? I questioned that idea. I became aware of it. You know, that just because nobody else has done that doesn't mean I can't. It it's just it hits you, and then you then you start thinking when that happens, Bernard. You start thinking, what other things do I believe? Have I never questioned? You know that aren't true. Yeah. You start really questioning everything that you've ever believed in life, and thinking, where's that coming from? Where's right. that idea come from that I couldn't? You know. So I questioned that, and I challenged it, and and you know I, I realized that I could. And, and you know, I mean, no, I, nobody in my family and, and that I've ever known has has published the book. I questioned that. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, that doesn't mean I can't. Right. And I, you know, I realized that I could. If I believed I could, I could. Right. Very powerful. Right. Yes. Very powerful. Because if you yeah. believe you can't, you can't. Right. Absolutely. If Absolutely. You, if you, you believe you, you can, can't. you can. If you believe you can't, you can't. Yes, that, that's true. Yes. Absolutely. Now, but yeah. what, but so was it the fact that you just wanted more that kind of prodded you to push through that fear? You know, was it the, the fact that you just knew you wanted more? What was yes. it that kind of? Well, you know, where that, that's a good question. Where that comes from, I, I believe, like you talked about, you know, you being different and everything. Where does that come from? How did you grow up in a family of, was it 12, that you were so different than everybody else? I asked myself that question too. Why did I want more? Why did I want to, you know, experience the world and want so much more when those around me didn't? Had no, no, no inclination to want more, yeah. you know, and I, and I couldn't understand that. I, I thought, why doesn't everybody want more in life? Why doesn't everybody want, you know, do as much as they possibly can with their life? Yeah. And that was a foreign concept to, to, to a lot of people around me. Most people that I knew was a foreign concept to. They just... You know, so where does that come from? I guess we're born with it. <laughs> I don't know exactly how I got it, but <laughs> it's an ache. I think it's an ache. It's like a a subtle ache that just kind of elevates or grows, yeah. and it just is like you know because yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, because I've yeah. had those times where I'm like, I am meant for greatness. Why doesn't well, anybody else want greatness? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it, you know, it's funny because, you know, my, my mother always said, you, you, you know, you're like my uncle Edward. And uh, Edward was like, the, uh, her family was a large family. And Edward was somebody who sort of struck out, you know, on his own and didn't live the life that the rest of the family did. You know, he, uh, he had his own business and uh, he traveled and he did all kinds of things, you know, not like the rest of the, the family. He, he, he lived a big life. And uh, so she said, you remind me of Edward, you know, and where Edward got that from, where I got that from, I have no idea. But I always knew that that what I wanted was was more, you know, I wasn't going to settle, 
you know, and just, uh, yeah, I, I somehow, so it's something innate in us and yeah. you know, that we're born with. Thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, yeah. But we all are. We all are. We just need to find it. We just find need it, to yes. Find it, yes. Mm -hmm. So, Harvey, what would you recommend to someone to help them understand what their own level of emotional intelligence is at this point? What What can they do? Well, um, what they can do is, is first of all, um, th figure out, uh, you know, when, when I look at uh, – the uh, I've got a quiz on my website. Uh, they're kind of smart. Or also, if they get if they get the the book, if they go through the areas of there. Actually, there are actually uh, official tests out there that uh, for emotional intelligence. My quiz isn't official. It's something that I just threw together to help people understand emotional intelligence. But if you look through the different emo areas of of and you look through those areas, uh, that, and uh, for example, in my book, you'll you'll say okay. If you have any self-awareness, just say, well, this is something uh, th that I'm good at. For example, you know, you can say, well, uh, I'm a very good at uh, assertiveness. You know, I, I can sort of protect my boundaries and stuff like that. And I'm pretty independent and stuff. But, hey, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not very – I don't have much empathy. You know, I don't understand, more, you know, people, you know, why they – you know, they sound like whiners all the time. Well, you know, like, I don't have much empathy. Okay, then th that might be an area that you could work on. Right. Okay, if you have a self-awareness, when you look at those different areas, you'll probably n know there's something that I'm good at uh, and that there's something that, uh, you know, that I'm not very, very good at. For example, self-regard. I don't feel as good about myself, really, you know, when I think about it. I, or, yeah, I'm, I feel pretty good about myself. Uh, you'll have a, a good feeling, or else you can do one of the, you know, the, the tests out there, you know, but, uh, you know, yeah. it, it, it depends on your self-awareness. Right, right. No, oh, I want are. everybody to yeah. go to the other kind of smart.com. I want you to go and just download that ass assessment, get an idea, just like he's saying, and then go over to, uh, or right there on um, his website, the other kind of smart, um, get his book or go to Amazon and get his book. Um, but really work on it because the more you know about yourself, the more you can tap into your greatness and really kind of achieve the goals that you have for yourself, both in business and in life. Um, so that's a great place to start. Wouldn't you say, Harvey? Excellent place to start. Yeah. For example, yeah. you know, for, for me, it was uh, really, really, I, I would, uh, you know, I, I grew up with, 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 with a lot of anger and, um, you know, I had some problems with my impulse control, you know, uh, just because something pops into your, your head doesn't mean it should come out of your mouth. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. So that's important to know, uh, you know, not only at work, but in all, all the relationships, because, you know, yeah. you're, you're, you're thinking something or feeling something. Um, it doesn't mean you, you, you have to say it. So right. uh, to be able to, 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 to pull back from that filter that and think things through before you, you say things, because, uh, you know, uh, d different things, but you, you, and you can learn some very, very simple techniques and just start doing it. This is the thing about emotional intelligence. We can learn about it, but we start doing things like do things. If, if, if you're uh, struggling in a certain area, start doing things. Um, you know, when, when, when I'm starting to get angry or something, when I'm starting to get very uh, emotional, I, I'll, I'll just not react. You know, I will wait uh, about 10 seconds or something and do some breathing and, and, and think things through. And I'll also, yeah, you get to the point where you're watching yourself. You're almost like outside of yourself. You're watching yourself. There's, there's another person watching you in this interaction. You know, saying, okay, no, just, you're not ready to, to, to speak yet. Wait, wait, you're going to make a, you're going to make a better decision here. If, right. if you wait this out and think this through. Right. Think this through before you, you know, you you re, you uh, you react because yeah. once once the message gets to your, the important thing to know is we feel we feel before we think we feel before we think when something when a message comes through to us uh, the first the first place that it goes to is what's called our emotional brain and that's our primitive brain that we've had since we lived in caves that warned us right away. You know, if there was danger around us, 
you know, and, and uh, you know, we had to fight or flight right away. That brain is still with us, even though, you know, there's not a lot of saber tooth tigers running around out there we have to be afraid of. We don't not get constant danger all the time, although maybe some situations where we are. But, you know, usually we don't need, but that's where the message goes. It takes a few a few seconds, about six seconds, experts say, for that message to reach our executive brain, our front frontal neocortex, that powerful thinking brain where we respond, we think things through instead of reacting. And, right. you know, the biggest example of, of, of uh, reacting uh, is road rage. And I, that was what my TED, TEDx talk was about. That's, you know, when your emotions are totally out of control and you're, you're acting strictly from your, your, your emotions, you're not thinking. And as soon as that ends, uh, you know, your, your road rage incident ends, mm. you'll probably regret, have major regret that you didn't wait and, right. you know, and, and think things through. But that, right. that's what happens. That's the worst example of being caught up in our emotions. Uh, right. And uh, uh, Daniel Goldman calls it uh, an emotional hijack. And so we have to be able to go beyond that so, so our emotions don't Aren't, aren't driving us. We're, they're not in control of us. We're in control of them. Right. So I'm, I'm thinking, because I've had a lot of conversations over the past several weeks, as a matter of fact, about an hour ago on, on my own live show about um, even, you know, a lot of business owners, a lot of entrepreneurs, women, they struggle from a selling perspective. You know, they get in all in their head and they get very emotional about needing to go and sell themselves or their products and services and that rejection, you know, potential mm -hmm. and whatnot. So what I'm hearing from you is, you know, as they are processing and, and kind of getting in their head about it, they just need to, can they also work to like refocus somewhere else? Sure. Sure. They could, you know, think about something else, take the focus away from that. Um, think about something else. I mean, think about something very, think about a positive outcome. The outcome that they want. Focus on that, you know, and 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 and, and get back to that, and uh, that will take us out of the 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 immediate situation, you know, and 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 take us to a a positive place, and 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 keep bringing back, going back to that positive place and the outcome that we want, and think about that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because one of the things that um you know that was mentioned even in your um in the opening of the show was talking about, you know, how the, our emotions or our emotional intelligence can impact us positively or negatively, even in the workplace and at home. Mm -hmm. So what, let's talk about, if you would, um, kind of what is the risk or the danger about not, you know, about not really being aware of your EI at work? And, and then what is the positive, you know, benefit that you'd get if you were, well-informed um, in regards to your emotional intelligence? Well, the, uh, <clears throat> the the negative would be, you know, when we say things sort of uh, without without thinking them through, in, you know, in, in, a, in a moment where emotions are controlling us, that, that uh, you know, we, we, we come back to come back to haunt us, you know, will cost mm -hmm. us maybe a promotion, it'll cost us a job, it'll cost us a lot of things, not only at work, but in our, in our relationships, you know, we say things that we later regret and, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> that's the thing, and be able to think things through. And on the the positive side, you know, if we're attuned to our emotions and 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 we, we learn to understand other people, we can use that. We can make a, <clears throat> a, a, you know very very positive connections with other people. You know, look for opportunities. You know, to 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 praise people. You know, um, and you know, authentically finding things about them, uh, remembering things about people uh, is 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 a great way to make connections. Their I'm name. Horrible at that. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Horrible they're, they're, at that. <laughs> yeah, we can do things to change that. I used to be horrible at that too, uh, but uh, we can do things to change that. You know, think about when you're speaking to somebody. If if you, if, you know, if you want to make a connection with them, want to get to know them better. Uh, develop any kind of relationship. Think about, uh, you know, when they say things, ask them questions. When they say things that are important to them, you know, mention their family, mention their vacation, their pets or whatever, that's important. And you're going to meet them again. Remember some of those things and ask them about them. That's how people will feel that they've been heard. 
and they'll feel they're important to you. You remember things about me. Wow, you know, I, I, I must have some, I must be important to you. You must, yeah, because otherwise you wouldn't bother. You wow. wouldn't bother remembering anything if I have no, have no influence on you. But now if I've, I've made some connection. I've, I, you know, I mean something to you because you remember. Remember their names and, and you know, try to remember how to, you know, pronounce their names. Use their names. <laughs> Use their names because because people it, their names it's the most beautiful sound to people's ears is their, their names. Mm. You know, if so you remember their names, I mean, um, I, I remember just the other day I was out there walking and and, and I, I you know I, I love uh, I love dogs and stuff and uh, you know stuff and uh, yeah I pet dogs along the path and don't have any. You know of our own anymore, but you know I just love talk, you know talking to owners about them and petting them and stuff. And they they know it. They come up to me. They can sense it. And uh, there's a lady, and you know we we walked for a ways and learned the name of her dog, and I learned her name, and it wasn't a common name. And you know came back on the trail, you know the, a couple of days later, and I ran into her and her dog again, and I said, "Hi, how are you doing?" And mentioned her name, and then her dog's name too. I remembered, and she says, "You remembered my name." Most people don't know my name, don't remember, and it was impressive, and it was like it was, it was a connection there because most people don't, they, you know, don't put in the time or effort. Right. And I've even gone to the point of where you have know, met somebody, and I wanted to develop a, a relationship. But you know, I wrote things down about them, even though you know, knowing I, I've, you know, I got I have ADD, so my memory isn't great. But I wrote things down. I said, I want to meet them again. I go into my little little uh, you know uh, where I've written it down and my little list and say, oh you know they're they're that's their uh, you know their partner's name that's their pet's name that's where like you know and and I, and I bring these things up when I meet them again and they're always like taken back because nice. most people don't don't do this nice. don't don't do this they're too bu- most people are too busy wanting to talk about themselves right and you know what they're doing and they're not you know uh, so. And the other thing is, is to really listen when people are talking. Most of the time, you know, when we're in a in a conversation, when somebody's speaking, we're thinking about our response. We're thinking about what we're going to say back. We're right. not really listening. Right. So, so right. I suggest yeah. practicing this when when you're with your you know your 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 partner, your your family, your good friend. Do this. Uh, practice having them talk for three minutes. And all you're going to do is feedback what what you heard them say, because you know you're going to take this this urge to to just respond won't be there. You you have to you know you're going to have to focus. Right. Pr- practice doing that. You'll become a better listener when you do that. Yeah. And and, and pe- most people don't even a lot of you don't have to agree with people necessarily at all, but. People want to be heard, whether you agree with them or not. They want to be heard. They want to know that you heard them. Right. That's the right. important thing. Yeah. 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 I was fascinated by um. I'm fascinated by the fact that you said that because I was fascinated when Oprah was going off the air. Do you? Did yes. you yeah. She was going yeah. off the air a number of years ago, and someone asked her, "Of the 25 years you've been, you know, on the air and talking to all these people, what have you learned from it?" And she, the one that she said only one thing, people came here because they wanted to be heard. Yes. And I just was, I was so so taken aback by that in a beautiful way. Mm -hmm. You know, that all it could, because here, you know, the people going on Oprah are like well-known, famous, rich people. And all they want to do is tell their story and be heard. Mm -hmm. And I and that just kind of like woo woke me up to what you're talking about as far as how you know how important connections are. Yes. Yeah. 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 Fascinating. Fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, now I want to really understand, um, and I want our listeners to understand. Can you help us um, with what do you cover in your book, The Other Kind of Smart? What what should we kind of be prepared for? Because I know all of our listeners and viewers are going to go out and they're going to buy your book, whether that's on Amazon or on the other kind of smart dot com. So what? <laughs> so what can they? What can they expect um, in your book? Well, they can expect uh, stories, uh, stories about people, everyday life, not famous people. You know, 
<laughs> everyday people, you know, yep. uh, that 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 are doing, you know, everyday everyday awesome. things, you know, and 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 uh, in, in the real world, uh, and uh, they'll be able to relate to the the you know re- and their stories, and they'll say, hey, you know, that sounds something like my uncle Tom, you know, he's like that or whatever. That's but uh, everyday stories about people, and, and they're, it's broken down into 15 different areas of of emotional intelligence. For example, self-awareness, self-regard, uh, independence, empathy, you know, uh, relation, healthy relationships, uh, impulse control, stress tolerance, uh, it, you know, it, it's flexibility, reality, you know, things like that, social responsibility. But they'll be able to read stories about people you know, in, in in those different areas. And they'll be able to read stories about people that were low, very low in those areas. They're able to read stories about people who were quite high in those areas, who functioned very well. And some stories about people who started out very low, but were able to, to develop themselves and, and be able to increase their emotional intelligence in those areas. And at the end of those stories, there'll be little sh- tips, very very simple tips about what they can do every day if they find, well, I, this is something I really need to work on. Simple tips that they can do every day, you know, that, uh, you know, I mean, for simple things like flexibility, you know, if, you, if you're a person that's really stuck in routine or whatever, you know, very simple things, go to work and take a different route, you know, uh, order something different in a restaurant when you go, you know, uh, I mean, you just do something to break that routine. It's right. uncomfortable. Like everything, when we want to change, anything we do to change the way we're, we're doing things is uncomfortable at first. Right. Yeah. You know, we have to get out of our comfort zone. Doing things differently is uncomfortable. Now, though we do it long enough, it becomes more and more comfortable. Eventually, that will become our new way of doing things. And, and the old yeah. way that doesn't work so well will sort of gradually fall aside. And we won't even think about the old way of doing things anymore. We'll be so we'll get used to doing the, you know, our, our new way of, of acting, um, our new way of, of thinking, will become the, you know, our norm. You know, mm-hmm. so it'll get better mm-hmm. over time. At first, it's it's uncomfortable. We have to, yeah. we'll have to work through that. Get out of our comfort zone. But yeah. all learning, all change, we we have to become uncomfortable. You know, we have to do yeah. something different. Try something different. Keep yeah. at it. You'll see the change happening, and uh, you know what? What? And, and it's it's like a muscle. Our comfort zones. The more we stretch it, the, you know, the the stronger it'll get. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And life and life shouldn't be comfortable, right? I mean, we should want to get uncomfortable. <laughs> well, I I have a quote. I've got quite. Uh, you know, I write a lot. Um, you know, if you followed me on on LinkedIn or Twitter, you know. Comfort zone is one of my areas of you know that that, that I really write about because uh, yeah, our comfort zones will keep us safe, but they'll also keep us small. Mm. So our that. yeah, our safety is we can, we can stay we, we can stay comfortable, but we can stay in this very small. If, if we want to grow, that. if we want to expand, we have to become uncomfortable. No growth happens inside that uh, you know little cocoon, our comfort zone. Yeah, it happens outside of that. We're pushing ourselves. That's when we learn. That's when we're growing. Yeah. 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 Well, especially if, you know, if we're, you know, if we're on this earth for any amount of time, we have been and we will be, then, you know, why would we not want to continue to push ourselves and to learn more about our, because that's what this is all about, right? Is getting to know who our true core essence is. Yes. Yes, that's what it is. Yeah. But there's a, there's so many people that don't want to, you know, want to be comfortable. Yeah. You know, they desperately want to be comfortable. Yeah. They will not push right. their comfort zone, and it's sad. Yeah. Because they're, they're they're missing out. They'll miss out on, on the learning about themselves, potential. They'll, they'll miss, miss out on you know, all of the wonderful things, you know, that could have been theirs yep. had they been willing to push through that. Yep. Yeah. 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 And and, I mean, our words sound very simple, but just the aha or the Mm. heaviness, the heaviness that comes with, you know, with even the thought of, you know, the comfort zone keeping us small 
Mm-hmm. It's just like, oh, why would you want that for yourself? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. you know. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 God. yeah, yeah. All right. So, love, love, love this. So, any last tips um, that you would have for our listeners and viewers in regards to really getting in touch with their emotional intelligence? Well, you know, I mean, if if if, if for, I think it's for self awareness, you know, if it's something. You know, if you're a person that's maybe not doesn't think they're very self-aware, have been told that by other people and, and things, you know, go to a movie, you know, or with with, with uh, or, or or watch something on Netflix, uh, on on to- and after after with your partner, somebody, you know, you can give you honest feedback. You know, talk about what what these people felt felt throughout the movie and why they felt this way. Why do you think they felt this way? What was going on for them? What what made them feel this way? The characters. The, the characters. characters yeah, the characters in the movie. Exactly. Yeah. The characters in the movie. That way, you, you know, it, it, it'll start twigging things about your own life and, and you know, uh, your feelings and things like that. It'll start the, the whole process of, of, of trying to understand people and try understanding yourself. And all understanding comes from first understanding yourself. So, yeah. yeah, and and just try something. Try something different every day. Something you'd like to do, but are, are maybe afraid of it. Not something may, even huge that you know you're terrified of, but something that that pushes you. That's uh, that's uncomfortable. Yeah, even a small step. Do that. See yeah. what that's like for you. Right. See how you feel right. at the end of the day. Yeah. Sure. And, and I would include in that, like, even just smile and say hello to a stranger on the street or in the grocery store, to, you know, you just try it. Uh, you know, go into go into your, your grocery store and smile just as big as you can. And then look at people, look at people and smile. See what the reaction you get, uh, you know, the, 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 the checkout clerk. Yeah. And, you know, and, and then you just go and, and have a frown or just, a you know, uh, look at your face. Notice the difference between how people react to you yeah. when you just smile. Call the uh, the clerk. You, you know they have name tag stuff. Call him or her by their name. Yes. Call yeah. him or her. See what reaction you get. Right. These, these people are invisible. Yeah. Nobody notices them. See what reaction you get from yeah. them. You make their day. Yeah. You know because you've noticed them. They have a name. You know. Yeah. Yeah. They'll be like, "How do you know my name?" Well, it's right there on your. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. they you forget it's there, you know? Yeah. Yes, they do. Yeah. They're invisible. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Well, I am so excited that uh, we had an opportunity to talk with you and to learn more about um, EI with you. And uh, appreciate you being part of the show and sharing all these amazing tips. Um, yes. It's been wonderful. I've, I've enjoyed every moment of it. Thanks so much. Oh, you're so welcome, Harvey. And I do want to remind everybody, please, you definitely want to take advantage of one, go to his website, the other kind of smart.com and even, you know, pull down that assessment and kind of get an idea of what are those, you know, emotions or those things that maybe you're not paying attention to and you haven't um, worked on uh, or even mastered. And, you know, that's a good first step. But then while you're there, make sure that you download or not download that you buy a copy of his book or go over to Amazon, get a copy of his book. And really get into this because as we we're talking about, you know, you have one life to lead, to live. Um, and, you know, depending upon how long or how short that is, you really want to ensure that you're optimizing you being the complete you, the full you. Um, and uh, emotional intelligence will help you do that. And uh, I appreciate it, Harvey, uh, you sharing all your great wisdom with us. I just appreciated being on your show and this was I had a great time. Thank oh, you. Oh, you're very, very welcome. And for everyone else, be sure to tune in. Whoops, I just lost that. To tune in next week uh, for another episode of Shedding the Bitch Radio. And for everybody here in our Shedding the Bitch community and Ball of Fire coaching community, thank you so much for joining us. And we will see you right back here. Bye. Thank you for listening to Shedding the Bitch Radio with Bernadette Bose. Join Bernadette every Tuesday at noon Eastern as she helps you shift your bitches to riches. And the dialogue is always going on at SheddingTheBitch.com. See you next week.